Hey everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass. This is Jasper running off somewhere. And if you want a tour of our renovated 1994 Northern Light 610, stay tuned. Alright, it has been a while since I've done videos. So it is a little bit weird being back in front of the camera. Jasper is being a ham, rolling in the snow. So after nine months of renovating my Northern Light 610, it is finally ready for use. The renovation took about nine times as long as I thought it would. Today I will take you on a full tour and also tell you some of the things that I don't really like about this. So a quick history of this truck camper. It is a 1994 Northern Light 610. Northern Light no longer makes these units. There was a fire at their factory. They lost the mold for this little camper and they decided not to build it again. These are very hard to find. I was lucky enough to find one on Kijiji, which is the Canadian version of Craigslist. And I drove to Tofino, British Columbia in order to pick it up. It took me about three or four months of checking Kijiji every single day in order to find this unit. And then for the one that I did find, I reached out, I was the first person, but I was longer distance. So they were actually going to sell it to somebody that was closer. I ended up having to pay, I think it was two grand over asking price in order to have them hold it and wait for me to come up and pick it up. So these units are in high, high demand. They are not easy to find. It has sat on a Toyota Tundra, but if you saw my video on that, you know why I don't have my Toyota Tundra anymore. So it is now sitting on a Ram 3500 diesel. Now this little truck camper was actually meant for a Tacoma sized truck. So it sits about six inches off the bed. I really didn't do too much on the outside. So I'll give you a quick tour. You have a 15 amp plug, fresh water fill, horizontal propane tank. So this is actually the original tank. It is a specific horizontal unit, so you can't just use any propane tank in there. It was recertified since it's from 1994. All new propane hoses, regulator, everything like that in order to run the heater that is inside. Then we have a gray water drain. We don't actually have a gray water tank, so I have an external tank and hose. Propane furnace. Then circling around on the back, we've got a ladder, but since it sits six inches off a lifted 3500 truck, that ladder is about five and a half feet off the ground in order to get to the first rung. Actually, first rung is taller than me, so it's almost six feet to get to the bottom of that ladder. I don't use that very much, but it is a great spot to hang my trash bag. Then you have your rear entry door. Coming around this side, Jasper's coming along with us. There really isn't too much. The two old vents that were used for the fridge, I took out the propane fridge, put in an all-electric one. Those vents are still there, but on the inside, they're actually completely sealed, so no water will get in. And then up on the roof, you'll see that there is a canoe rack or a roof rack that came with it. I then ran aluminum struts across. So I've got 200 watts of ZAMP Solar up on the roof, and for the little bit that I have in here, so far that is actually running everything really well. I have an additional 200 watts I was planning to put up there, but it is winter, and I don't really want anybody crawling up there. So for now, that is good enough. You ready to go inside? Oh, boy. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. All right, welcome inside. Hi, puppers. In here, this used to be all old brown cabinetry. All the appliances were original, so back from 1994. There was a cabinet here that had a little toilet in it, so it was a lot different in here. This unit was in amazing condition. The second owner that I bought it from, I think they said they used it once or twice, if that, and then they stored it since basically 95 or 96. This carpeting on the roof is actually all original. All of the walls that I uncovered, there's no water damage. Overall, they were in really good condition. Let me take you on a tour. It's really tight in here, so we'll see how this goes. All right, it is called a Northern Light 610 because the floor that sits in the truck bed is six foot 10 inches. So that gives you an idea of how big it is in here. That would be from this wall, right below Jasper's paws, to the back door. Back here in the doorway, we've got a window. It is frosted glass. This is just the slide for the door, which I did replace with a completely clear one. So when the door is open, you can have a nice view. Over here in the kitchen, we have the pantry, closet, whatever you want to call it. 
These are just stick-on hooks that I've put on the wall. All of the cabinetry I repainted. This was all crud cutter cleaned. So I tried to take off the top coat and everything that was on here. Then I primed the entire camper. Then I did a double coat of paint. And then all of the cabinet doors have a poly on them, which the poly has actually held up pretty well. And on the inside of the cabinets, I ended up putting in these walnut plywood shelves. So it's not solid walnut. It's not super heavy. All of these motion sensor lights. There are mirrors. This is where I can get ready in the morning. And it is a full length mirror. So if you really wanted, you could see yourself in the mirror, I guess. Also down here in the bottom of the cabinet, there is a 120 volt AC plug and a DC 12 volt plug. The reason I did that, the height of this shelf is the exact height of the Starlink router. So one of the things I would like to do is actually mount Starlink on the roof. They have flat mounts for it nowadays. And then I would actually run the wire down into the closet, down to the router here on the bottom shelf. It's also a great spot if you have any kind of gear that you wanna keep charged up. You can put it in there, plug it in, and you're good to go. Moving down in this huge space, this is a Propex propane heater. I only have the one heat outlet in the entire unit. This does a great job of keeping the whole space warm. Underneath, we have the CO2 monitor and a fire extinguisher. Here in the kitchen, you've got a couple of cabinets. Again, very similar. It's got the Gorilla Grip in there. Right now I've got all the cabinets empty, but this is actually where I stored all of my plates, bowls, my one pot, because you really don't need more than one pot, mugs, wine glass, all of that stuff actually fit in here. Even my margarita shaker. And then this tiny little cabinet, in my mind, is actually basically useless. I have a little tray that slides in there, but other than that, it really doesn't fit too much. When I was at Overland Expo, I saw some overlanding vans that had these kind of magnetic setups. And I thought it would be amazing. And as you can see, even on the very mild dirt road that I came in on, three of my spices have fallen off. So it's really not very effective at all. This is probably going to not last very long in here. Underneath, I have a switch and that controls all of the kitchen lights. So one thing you'll notice about this kitchen versus a normal 610 kitchen is that the sink and the stove are swapped. The reason I did it is when the sink was here and you try washing your face, I would always hit my head on this cabinet. So I moved the sink over to this area where there's more headroom and that way I could use the sink to wash up, wash my hands and just have a much easier to use space. The soap container, it's built in. That way I didn't have to worry about taking soap off the counter every time I wanted to move. And then a two burner Dometic cooktop. This is a solid walnut countertop. Solid wood in a lightweight truck camper doesn't really go, but it is such a small counter space and you cut huge holes for the sink and the stove top that the weight of this countertop compared to what was in here is only a few pounds. It is a raw wood, so it does require oiling, but if anything ever happens to it, I can just sand it and it looks brand new again. Then for curtains, these used to have those pull down shades. I ended up purchasing blackout curtains, cut them to size. This one here is actually just snaps. So they just snap right into place, very easy, very lightweight. If you ever need to wash them, you can just throw them in the wash. And then down here, we have some towel hooks. I've taken all the laundry out, but let me actually use a shirt. Okay, tank top as a towel for overlanding, going on dirt roads. If you use a regular hook for a towel, you tend to find your towels on the floor when you get there. So these, you slide the towel in, pull it down, and it's not going anywhere. But these are now my preferred towel holders. And over here, you'll see there is a little switch. This is actually for the running lights on the outside of the camper. I ended up putting them on their own switch because when you're boondocking, I take Jasper out at night so he can go to the bathroom. And I wanna be able to find my rig again. So it's nice because you can turn these on. It's not too bright, so it doesn't really blind you. And then this is one of the original switches, but the coloring actually matched the walnut and it runs the water pump. Now I have my little garbage can that hangs off of there. It opens or it falls down. And then the propane sensor is actually wired into that wall as well. Then over here, coming in towards the bedroom, you've got another big storage closet. It's where I keep all of my clothes. Down here, I actually keep a plastic bag normally with all my dirty laundry. So it's like the dirty laundry compartment. And then this bench that I'm sitting on houses the water tank as well as the fuse box and a bunch of the wiring. This was completely ripped out. There used to be an 11 or 14 gallon water tank in here. There's now a 30 gallon water tank and it has 
as a modern fuse box for the DC and the AC outlets. And then originally, this was a completely solid wall. But behind this wall is where all the wiring goes into the kitchen, as well as all the plumbing comes from the outside wall into the water tank. In order to replace all that, I had to get into this wall. So I ended up just cutting a hole in it. And instead of sealing it back up, I put this white panel in here, and that allows me to open that up and reach my arm in. So in the event I ever have to replace any of that, I can really easily get to that area. Then on this side, this used to be a three-way propane fridge. We have a DC fridge and it's really small and it's really energy efficient. For me with proper meal planning, it can hold up to a week's worth of food. That is for one person and that is eating leftovers and repeat food. If you wanted a new meal every night, it's probably two to four days worth of food, depending on what you're eating. Then you're gonna see moving over here into the living area is a cabinet where I can store my laptop and my iPad. It also has USB outlets, a 12 volt outlet and a regular 120 volt outlet. So I can sit here, work, plug in my work laptop, charge any hotspots or anything I may have there. On the front, there's a pouch where you can put wires. There's another little cubby where my GoPro actually fits. It looks like it's just built right onto the wall, but the real reason this is here is my lithium battery is actually the full length there. It didn't fit in the cabinet. So in order to get all of that in here, I had to cut a huge hole, build this custom cabinet. Now the trick is with all of the wiring here, this wall had to be permanent. However, if I ever wanna be able to access the battery, I can't just get to it from in here. The battery needs to slide out through this wall. So the whole front of this cabinet slides off, the battery will unscrew, slide out, and then you can get into all the wiring and do any maintenance you need to do in there. Now for the electrical system. Above and below the fridge is actually the powerhouse of this whole unit and makes this completely off-grid ready. I never really have to plug into power. The 270 amp hour Game Changer Battleborn Lithium battery, you can install it any which way. So it can go in a cabinet like this. And then a Victron solar controller and the solar fuse down in this cabinet. Having a battery, and electrical underneath the fridge is a concern. So there's actually a whole rubber mat, solid floor, waterproofing, everything underneath the fridge in order to protect the battery. And then up here is where the 2000 watt Victron inverter charger is, as well as the bus bar, the battery monitor, and all of the other electronics. The 2000 watt inverter charger actually allowed me to completely pull out the old converter that was in here. So if I plug the RV into an outlet to charge up the battery, if I wanna run the 120 volt outlets in here, all of that stuff is powered by that inverter. Lithium batteries can be used in any temperature, but they can't charge below freezing because it'll cause damage to them. So my Battleborn is heated and that is controlled by this switch. That way, if I'm not running heat in here for some reason, but I wanna charge the battery, and just turn on that heater, battery warms itself, and everything's good to be charged. Also on this wall, they're just stuck on here with tape, is the Waggle pet monitor that I use, as well as a little Govi thermometer, which tells me the humidity and the temperature here in the RV. And then over here in the living room, since I sealed up the old exterior vents, this is the vent that will allow the heat to escape from the cabinet for the fridge. I've just attached my Bose speaker to that and then attached my AT&T hotspot to the wall as well. So kind of a little command center over here. Above me, you'll see more cabinets. Michael ended up building me a copper and walnut clock to go into that space. And then these are just storage cabinets up here. All the light fixtures have been replaced with dimmable LED fixtures. It is super bright out, so now that you're really gonna be able to tell. These are the original cushions. They were reupholstered with a fake leather from Joanne Fabric. Also in these cabinets, I ended up building a divider wall. When I was driving, this was just one long cabinet and everything would just go flying from one end to the other. So by building that divider wall in there, I could store food, things like that over here, and then gear, computer stuff, and I didn't have to worry about them mixing with each other. And welcome to the bedroom. You are sitting inside my electrical cabinet, so kind of an odd view, but this is the tightest space of the whole RV. As you notice, I am right below the escape hatch, but I still can't sit up straight. It is a lay down only space. So it is bigger than a twin, but smaller than a full. This is the original memory foam mattress in here. It is back from 94. It was not that uncomfortable, but at the same point, not the most comfortable thing. I also don't really like memory foam. So on top of it, I have a, it's about a one, two inch thick wool plush topper. It's from Birch Living 
and it makes this whole bed area a whole lot more comfortable. I'm actually gonna open this up. It's getting warm in here. Since it's such a small space and it is insulated, it actually stays pretty darn warm in here, especially when the sun's out, which when I was down in the desert, it does get pretty warm in here. I didn't have the curtains, so I'm hoping those help, but summertime could be a little warm. So in the bedroom, these have bungees on them, so you can just drop the curtains and hold them into place like that. These windows are just your slide windows, so they only open halfway. There is a screen, the nice part is you can push that screen away and then actually go right outside. Well, not actually go outside, but you can see clearly without the screen and then you can push these up and clip them into place. I've also replaced the lights in here with dimmable lights and they're blue. So at night when it's all dark in here, you can just have the blue light on. It is a lot less harsh. And then if you wanted, you can increase it, turn it off. I had a new Max Air fan put in. It's the deluxe version, so it comes with a remote. So the remote is mounted here. I also have a couple of USB and 12 volt outlets so I can charge my phone. And then just a little bungee net so I can keep my Sudoku book, my phone goes there when I'm sleeping, things like that. And then the escape hatch itself, in the event of an emergency, I can actually pop it open. Or if I just feel like sitting up straight, there you go. I can sit up straight in bed. I only need an extra eight inches. Back inside we go. And back to scratching. So the Northern Light was my dream truck camper. I wanted a Tundra with a hard sided truck camper. He does not like soft side tents. They make too much noise. So a pop-up truck camper would not have worked for him. So the Northern Light 610 was actually one of the only lightweight truck campers that was hard sided that I could fit on a Tundra comfortably. My Tundra only had 1300 pounds of payload. So now that it is done and we have gone on two shakedown trips, let me tell you what I don't like about this camper. So first things first, we've kind of talked about how small the bed area is. And having an 85 pound Driven Shepherd mix, a little tight up here. So Michael will come and visit me at some points and we're not gonna fit up here in this bed together. Speaking of small spaces, when I got this camper, I was really excited for this bench area and to work there. But once I sat here, I realized it was too short. So in order to sit on this bench, I actually have to scooch to the edge, slouch, and I still only have half an inch worth of space. So I can stretch my legs out, touch the kitchen counter, and hold myself here, but this is not comfortable and I actually can't work on this bench. So instead, I have added these extra pillows. They make up a backrest on the water bench and I can stick my feet here. If I was to redesign this, I would actually turn all of that into storage or extra counter space or something. The other thing you'll notice now that we've done the tour, is that there is a bed, a living area, a front door entry, a kitchen, but no bathroom. So there's no bathroom and there is no shower. I have tried to put a composting toilet in here, but it sits right here on the floor. So when you're going to the bathroom, you are right in the middle of your living space. And that's a little bit odd to me. I like having the separate bathroom area. There's also no shower, so Yes, you can absolutely go find a Planet Fitness or RV park, truck stops. There's a lot of different showers out there, but you have to go out in search of shower. And in the few trips that I've done in here, I really miss my evening shower. So if I was going from tent camping to this rig, this would feel luxurious. But I am coming from the Airstream base camp where I had the wet bath and it is definitely hard to adjust away from that for longer trips. If we were just doing weekend trips, this would be perfect. But doing week-long, month-long trips, it's gonna be a little tricky in here. And that is it, that is the tour. So thank you for sticking around and checking out the whole thing. I'm extremely happy with the way it turned out. I learned so much during the renovation. So if you have any questions about our tiny truck camper, feel free to comment below. Thank you so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.